Hey everyone, my name is Kevin Byrne, and welcome to the Tool Cabinet Series. This is going to be a three video series on how I'm building my hand tool cabinet. In this first video, I'll cover case construction, and that's going to be everything from milling up the rough stock, to cutting the joinery for the interior dividers, as well as the joinery at the corners of the case. With that being said, let's get started. So I kind of lost the footage from milling the stock, but I do have this footage of me milling up some stock maple, and it's kind of the same thing. So we'll roll with it for now. Here I'm just face joining one face, and edge joining one edge. This will give me two reference surfaces that I can then use to mill the other two sides up by running them through the table saw. and the planer. After I had my stock fully milled up, I could lay out from my joinery at the corners of the cabinet. I chose dovetails because it's a hand tool cabinet and I wanted some fancy hand cut joinery. After I had it laid out, I sawed my lines using a dovetail saw. I'm going to dovetail saw again to saw the shoulder on the outside tail. I don't really have a great bench right now, so I had to use a parallel clamp and a stool to act in place of a vice. Once I had all the shoulders cut on the outside tails, I got to work removing the waist in the middle. Not really the best with a coping saw, but I did what I could. I seem to have lost the footage for chopping the dovetails and paring them down, but it's simple really. Just pare down to the lines you marked, and then get ready to lay out the pins. Once I had my pins laid out, I repeated the same process of sawing my lines, using a coping saw to remove most of the waste, and then chiseling down to the final line. I used a combination of a router and some chisels to cut the joinery for the inside of the case. I used the router to cut most of the dado and then squirt off the ends with a mallet and chisel. Next I had to add a rabbit around the back of the entire case to accept the back panel. I used the same process of cutting most of it with a router and then spraying off the ends with a chisel and a mallet. The dust collection on my router isn't the best, so there is a ton of cleanup to do. Next, I cut the back panel to size. It's made of half inch plywood and it was just a little bit too big for my table saw, so I had to use the circular saw. I cleaned up the edges and brought it down to final dimension with a hand plane. And after that, it's time for the glue up.
Parallel clamps do a pretty good job of keeping everything square, but I decided to check by measuring from both corners. They both ended up just under 51 inches. Here I'm assembling the interior of the cabinet. This first one is for the saw tail, and then the next two house the drawer and create a couple of shelves. I skipped out on gluing in any of the interior dividers in case I want to make some changes or revisions in the future. The back of the case is just held on with screws. I put some into the edges and then some into the interior dividers to keep them neat and in place. Here I'm just dry fitting the piece of walnut in that's going to be the drawer front. And I don't really have the drawer made up yet, but it's nice to imagine what it will look like. Before I can mount the cabinet, I have to remove the old shelf system that was there. I didn't really measure anything for the height of the cabinet, kind of just held it up where I thought it looked good and drew a line. Now this trick for hanging cabinets I learned from a real old cabinet maker when I was volunteering with Habitat for Humanity. Basically you screw a board to the wall, you level that, and then you just set the cabinet on top of it and screw it in. It's dead simple and it guarantees you to have a level cabinet with not a whole lot of stress to get it there. Except of course when you almost drop the whole thing on your head. Secure the cabinet to the wall, I just use some screws through the back panel and into the studs. And seeing as I can hang from it, I think it's staying there. Well everyone, that about does it for this first part of the hand tool cabinet series. I'm hoping you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed building this cabinet, and that you'll stick around for the next two parts. If you're looking for the subscribe button, it's right here. Thanks. Thanks again for tuning in today. I'm Kevin Byrne, and until next time, take it easy.